Mindful Measure presents mind-blowing psychology facts about human behavior. Number one, a habit can take between as little as 18 days to as long as 254 days to be formed, but on average it takes about 66 days to form a habit. We have habits because it's our brain's way of automating actions. It's our brain's way of freeing up mental space for more important tasks. The amount of time it takes to form a habit depends on what the task is. Something simple like drinking a glass of water first thing in the morning is quicker to turn into a habit while doing 50 push-ups a day takes longer. So if you're trying to improve yourself or become more organized and productive, make sure to keep doing the task repeatedly for at least two months to build the habit. Number two, people who are prone to feeling guilt have higher levels of empathy for others. Researchers have done studies to prove this by having a large group of people look at photos of actors and label the emotions the actor is feeling based on their facial expressions. The individuals who were more guilt prone were better able to identify emotions based off of facial expressions. They determined which people were more prone to guilt by asking them hypothetical questions about how they would feel in different negative scenarios, such as how they would feel if they made a huge mistake at work. Number three, the better the relationship you have with your siblings, the better your social skills are. Both our parents and our siblings have a large influence on our development from a young age. When we are young, our parents teach us social etiquette, such as how to act in public and how to be polite at the dinner table. But researchers believe our siblings also have a big role in our future social skills. Our siblings teach us how to act at school and how to act cool around friends. Siblings are often tougher in social environments, such as school or play dates with friends. So they teach us a lot about how to socialize with others. These childhood social skills that our siblings teach us make us better at socializing as an adult. Number four, we remember negative information more than positive information. Some theories for why we may focus on the negative more often is because of our evolution. Many psychologists believe that long ago, it was crucial for our survival to pay attention to the negatives. Our ancestors were surrounded by many environmental threats, such as predators, and the more attentive they were to the negative threats, the more likely they were to survive. As understood by this theory, our brains try to keep us safe by keeping us paying attention to bad things happening around us. This phenomenon is called the negativity bias and can have a lot of impact on our behaviors. Being mindful and aware of our negativity and talking to ourselves more positively can help to combat this negativity bias. Number five, we think food that others make for us tastes better than our own food. Have you ever spent hours cooking an intricate meal and you're extremely hungry just to finally be done cooking and you barely have an appetite? Researchers have found that when we make food ourselves, we are anticipating and imagining how it will taste while we're cooking it. We also are exposed to the smells, the taste, and the overall process of cooking the food. So we don't have the factor of surprise when we take the first bite of our own food. When you think of food for a while, you become less hungry for it as time passes. So when others make food for you, you aren't spending time beforehand thinking about the food or pre-consuming it and it ends up being more enjoyable. Number six, working in a blue colored room can boost your productivity. Many studies have been done to show that blue is the most efficient color to promote productivity and overall well-being. Studies have shown that blue happens to be the color that helps to relieve stress, promote tranquility, and keep the brain from being disrupted. A study done by the University of Texas compared how people work in environments that are red and white against how they work in a blue and green environment. The results show that people are more productive and stimulated in a blue and green environment. So if you're trying to be more productive, you should think about working in a blue room or painting your office blue. Number seven, we frequently see faces and objects when there is none. As children, we used to lay in the grass and look up at the clouds. We'd search for objects and shapes in the clouds, and chances are we saw many different things, from unicorns to faces to animals. Even as adults, we experience the same exact phenomenon. We see faces in random objects, such as bushes, trees, flowers, clothing patterns, and houses. This phenomenon is called pareidolia. Studies have shown that people who are religious or superstitious are more likely to see faces and objects. Theories suggest the reason why we experience this is because of evolution. There is an advantage from an evolutionary standpoint to detect faces quickly. It helps us spot predators and danger. Number eight, if you lose your wallet, people are more likely to return it if there's a photo of a child in it. Psychologists tested this out by leaving 240 wallets lost around the city of Edinburgh. The wallets included a mailing address as well as either a photo of a baby, a puppy, a family, or an elderly couple. The wallets that contained the baby photo were the most likely to be returned with 88% of the wallets being returned to the owners. The wallets with the puppy photo were returned 53% of the time. The family, 48%. The elderly couple, 28% of the time. This was a fascinating study that surprised the psychologists involved. 
because they did not expect these results. So if you're worried about misplacing or losing your wallet, make sure to include a baby photo in it to ensure it will be returned back to you. Number nine, intelligent people tend to have less friends because they are more selective of who they surround themselves with. A large study measured the happiness levels of 15,000 people in comparison to their IQ levels and their friendships. The results of the study showed that people who had low to average IQ scores reported being happier when spending time with friends. These individuals also reported having a lot of friends. The opposite was true for those with high IQ scores. They reported they were happier when they spent time alone. The researchers believe that intelligent people are happier when they're alone because they are focused on long-term objectives and prefer to spend less time socializing to reach their goals. Intelligent people do value friendships, however, they often view socialization as a distraction from their ambitions and their future. Number 10. Many people become more imaginative at nighttime. Studies have shown that many people create the best ideas as they're falling asleep, followed by when they wake up and in the middle of the night. The participants of the study also stated that they believe their bed is a creative boosting environment. One theory to explain why people are most creative as they're falling asleep is that during the day we have many distractions to focus on such as our jobs and our families. But when we're trying to fall asleep, we have the free time to daydream and think in different ways. Another explanation is that when we're tired, our brains aren't as great as filtering out distractions and focusing on a specific task. So we're able to think outside of the box better. Number 11, smart people often underestimate themselves and don't believe they're smart. The opposite happens with less intelligent people. They tend to overestimate their intelligence and believe they're really smart. This is called the Dunning-Kruger effect. It's a cognitive bias that occurs when a person's lack of knowledge in a certain field causes them to overestimate their skills. And when a person who is extremely competent in a field believes that it's so simple and it comes so naturally, it must be easy for everyone. Therefore, underestimating their knowledge and skills. This is why it's important to keep an open mind and gain insight from others to help mitigate the effects of the Dunning-Kruger effect. Number 12, the way you dress is linked with your mood. The clothes we wear are an expression of our mood and how we're feeling. The same can also be said in reverse. If we're not feeling great, sometimes dressing up and looking our best can make us feel better. The way we dress influences our mood and behavior in many ways, such as our perception of ourselves, how others view us, our self-identity, and our confidence levels. For example, wearing baggy sweatpants and a hoodie can make you feel comfortable, but also might show that you're feeling down or unmotivated. Wearing a bright, flowy dress in the summertime can make you feel happy and excited. Wearing a well-fitting suit can make you feel confident and motivated. So in order to feel your best, dress your best. Number 13, up to 90% of people text things they can't say in person. I'm sure most people can relate to this one. If you have to tell someone something, but you're feeling nervous or worried about it, you may find it easier to just send the message over text. It can be significantly easier to be honest, upfront, and more revealing over text rather than in person. Why is this? When we send text messages, we are just enough removed from reality as opposed to being in person that we get enough courage to send some revealing or honest information. In fact, this happens so often that sometimes therapists have implemented the option for their patients to text them in real time as they are experiencing things they may need help with because it allows the therapist to capture their patient's true emotions and feelings as they're experiencing them. Number 14, singing reduces stress and anxiety levels. This one doesn't just apply to those with good singing voices. Even if you're not the best singer, you can absolutely benefit from the mental health effects of singing. When you're driving down the road, you might find yourself belching out the lyrics to your favorite song. When we sing out loud, we're having a whole body experience. We're taking deep breaths in, we're feeling the emotions of the song, and we're releasing endorphins and feel good hormones such as dopamine. Our brain also shows increased activity while we sing. Studies have shown that singing along to music can actually improve our well-being and reduce levels of stress and anxiety in the body. So if you're trying to improve your mental health quickly, Try singing out loud to some of your favorite songs and enjoy the benefits. Number 15, people who openly talk about their goals are less likely to succeed. People often believe that sharing their goals with others will help to hold them accountable and thus helping them stay motivated and on track to reaching their goals. However, this is the furthest thing from the truth. Studies have tested this out and found out that when people openly talk about their goals, they feel a premature sense of completeness which leads them to feel less motivated to achieve their goals. The act of telling others your goal will provide you with the reward of social recognition. So you feel less compelled to complete it since you've already received your reward. So if you want to achieve your goals and stay motivated, it's best to keep it to yourself until you get there. Number 16, sarcasm is a sign of a healthy brain. Sarcasm can often be used negatively to instigate conflict. However, 
it can also be a great way to promote creativity and boost brain capacity. Sarcasm effectively exercises the brain and stimulates complex thinking. Not only does the individual using sarcasm happen to have a healthy and active brain, if the receiver can identify that it's sarcasm, it shows that they have a healthy cognitive function. In order to understand sarcasm, our brains need to process the difference between literal meanings and sarcastic expressions. This cognitive process promotes us to be more creative and have a healthier brain function. Number 17. Most of our memories are reconstructed and not exactly how they happened. People often believe that our memory is a completely accurate recall of something that has happened. However, our memory is actually quite unreliable and can be easily manipulated. Reconstructive memory theory states that our memory recall is easily influenced by multiple different cognitive processes, such as our perception, attitudes, beliefs, knowledge, and imagination. For example, if you think of a childhood memory, you might assume that you went to school that day of the recalled memory. However, you don't actually remember that you went to school that day, so you're essentially filling in the blanks of your memory. Now, when you recall the same memory again in the future, you will recall that you did go to school on the day of the memory. Even if it might not be true, when we recall memories, we are subconsciously reconstructing them with new information, making the memory less accurate and more unreliable each and every time. Number 18, the music you listen to impacts your perception of the world. Not only can music affect your mood, it also can impact the way we view the world. Listening to sad music can make you feel sad and listening to happy music can put you in a good mood. However, the type of music you listen to can also influence our perception of the world. Studies have tested this by having people listen to either happy or sad music while they look at a screen and perform a task. A happy or sad face quickly pops up on the screen. The participants had to indicate whether they saw a happy or sad face. The results showed that the participants listening to a sad song saw a sad face, while the participants listening to a happy song saw a happy face on the screen. So next time you put on a playlist, remember that it can affect your mood and your world perception. Number 19. The feeling of being in love is a chemical reaction from the brain, not the heart. When we think about love and romance, we think about hearts, since after all, it is the symbol of love. The heart has been used as a symbol of love for thousands of years, but scientifically, the heart is not responsible for the failings of love. Love and other romantic emotions are regulated in the brain, specifically the amygdala region. It's believed that the heart started becoming known as a love symbol because when we feel the emotion of love, our hearts race and flutter. Although the failings of love start in the brain, the brain involves the heart in its emotional process due to the fight or flight reaction, which causes an elevated heart rate. Number 20. People often have a shared perspective when it comes to imagination. This phenomenon is called the canonical perspective. When humans imagine an object, they imagine it the same exact way as others. They have a viewing angle from the front, rotated slightly, and slightly elevated. Researchers tested this out by having a group of people draw a coffee mug on a piece of paper. Most of the participants drew the mug from the front, slightly elevated, and with the handle on the right side. This shared perspective doesn't just pertain to coffee mugs, but humans also have a shared perspective with most objects, including dogs and cats. Number 21. Backup plans make you more likely to fail. Making plans is a great thing, and having a backup plan in case plan A falls through can also make you feel less worried. However, research has shown that having a backup plan actually makes you more likely to fail. Researchers believe that this is because when you set up a backup plan, you're not as concerned about failing to achieve your goal since you have a backup option. By creating a backup plan, you're creating an emotional safety net, which could lessen your desire to reach your goal. When you create a backup plan, there is also a part of you, whether conscious or subconscious, that already expects to fail, hence making failure more likely. So don't worry too much what happens if your plans or goals fall through. Instead, focus on achieving them first. Number 22. We're able to remember groups of three or four items better. This process of remembering things in groups is called chunking. Chunking is all around us. For example, phone numbers and credit card numbers are often remembered in three groups of three or four digits. Learning guitar notes is easier when grouping sequential notes together. Making a grocery list is often easier when placing items into categories such as produce, meats, bakery, and dairy. Our brains are better at recalling large chunks of information than small bits. So when we group things into three to four items, we're making the information a larger chunk. We have a natural tendency to see patterns and make connections in any information given to us. Number 23, you can fake yourself into thinking you're making progress. It's called the illusion of progress. Fake it till you make it is a popular saying, but it actually has some truth to it. The best way to use the illusion of progress is when you're trying to improve yourself. 
A healthy way to fake it till you make it is to act as if you already have what you want or you are who you want to become. This can help to give you the courage and confidence to get where you want to be. However, there can be negatives to faking it, such as becoming inauthentic or overconfident before achieving your goals. It can also turn into imposter syndrome if you use the illusion of progress too much or in the wrong manner. Number 24, we are happier when we're busy. Studies have shown that most people prefer to be doing something, even if it's pointless work, rather than doing nothing at all. Researchers believe that this is because of human evolution. Our ancestors had to conserve their energy in order to survive, whereas now we no longer need to conserve our energy for survival purposes, so we have an excess of built up energy. People dread being bored and having idle time. However, overworking yourself and being exhausted will reduce levels of happiness. So there needs to be a balance between relaxing and staying busy. Number 25. We aren't as good at multitasking as we think we are. Many people believe that they're good at multitasking, but it's scientifically not true. People like to believe they're great at texting and driving, listening to music while reading, having multiple tabs open on the computer at once. Multitasking overloads the brain's working memory, which already has a limited capacity for information processing. Many people multitask with the belief that they're going to get more done or being more productive. However, multitasking actually slows us down. It's best to focus on one task at a time and then move on to the next. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to our channel and comment which fact about human behavior you were the most surprised by. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.